What's up friends, it's Jono and I'm gonna talk about developers again. Now, in my previous video, I walked through some super interesting 2022 data that really shines a light on how developers like to learn and solve problems, okay? And you can find a link to that video in the video description below. And I recommend you check it out later on because it will really help you to tune your developer facing content really effectively. But there was another question that I wanted to ask and that is, well, how do developers go to uh, keep up to date and find information about their, their chosen field and technologies that are interested in and to keep up to date with what's going on. Well, that is what I wanna cover in today's video. So first of all, I'm gonna go through some fresh, tasty new data that I'm gonna walk through with you. And then I'm gonna scribble out some really practical things that you can do today based upon what we're learning in the data in this video, okay? So let's check out the data first of all. Now, this data, like in the previous video, uh, comes from Slash Data. They're an amazing company. They interview thousands of developers regularly and they consolidate all of their insights into reports and they've got a whole platform that you can query. You can find out more about Slash Data down there in the video description. So the question here, first of all, is where developers go to find information about software development and stay up to date. Now, unsurprisingly, the top voted response here is open source communities. Now, I'm not surprised by this for a couple of different reasons. Well, first of all, open source is so incredibly prevalent in the world. Most companies, I would argue at this point, are either building open source software or they're building on open source software. It's very, very popular. It's essentially the modern way in which we build technology. So by definition, if you're using a lot of open source software, you're gonna be spending a lot of time in open source communities. However, the key word here is communities, right? This isn't necessarily just open source community documentation or magazines or news sites or podcasts, it's communities. So just keep that in your head for a little bit later on when we scribble down some recommendations. Social media, very popular. Again, not particularly surprising to me. I think social media is a great place where people source information, especially links to other things, such as blog posts and podcasts and websites and community forums and things like that. Again, we see number three down here, community websites and forums. Again, keep that in your head. We're gonna talk about that a little bit later on. And then the final two that I really wanna zone in on, on here are official vendor websites and then Q&A sites. Now, official vendor websites, I think a lot of that's gonna be documentation, which is not particularly surprising because um, documentation and kind of blogs that kind of keep people up to date with what's going on you know, uh, let's say a news feed with what's going on with a particular project. And also just Q&A sites, Stack Overflow, um, are just kind of like very, very, um, these are very popular websites where people go to, uh, to solve problems. And I think there's probably a certain amount of learning that just naturally happens along the way there as well. But let me also take a look at this next set of data, which is the types of content developers consume for keeping up to date. Now, in the previous video, I was talking about how developers, like what kinds of content developers like for learning and for problem solving. And long form media was what it was all about. Long form blogging and long form videos were especially popular, okay? But when we go and take a look at the data here, social media updates is by far the most popular one here. Now, again, I'm not particularly surprised by this because social media is at its core, it's an interrupt driven mechanism. Like when you're on Twitter, when you're on Facebook, when you're on TikTok or Instagram or LinkedIn, you're kind of doing something, um, you're kind of looking through things and then content is flowing past. When it grabs your attention, when it interests you, when it excites you, you stop and look, right? I don't want to use a bad analogy here, but I'm gonna, it's kind of like a car crash. When you're driving along the freeway and you see a car crash, unless you are frankly weird, you're gonna look because we're nosy. Human beings are nosy creatures, okay? You're gonna take a look and see what's going on, okay? So it's the same thing with social media. When something catches our eye, then we zone in on it. So I think one of the reasons why this data is, is, is pointing in the direction of social media is because we go there for new and exciting things, which social media does have. Um, and then when we see something that's new and exciting, it takes us there, but we remember that's how we found it, okay? So they probably find this information on social media, but the way in which that information is delivered is probably gonna be through blogging and other mechanisms as well. Also short form text um, is how people keep up to date. Blog posts, listicles, not particularly surprising. Podcasts is down at 45%. This doesn't particularly surprise me as well. Podcasts are, are very popular with certain people and not popular with other people. For example, I've been podcasting since 2004. I don't listen to any podcasts. You wanna know why? Because I work from home. I don't sit in a car. And honestly, I can't just sit there with a podcast on. I have to be doing something. So that's one of the reasons why podcasts don't necessarily work with me, but they work with a lot of people because they have a commute or they like to go on bike ride or they like to exercise and listen to something. When I'm exercising, I like to watch Netflix, okay? But you know, podcasts are, are reasonably popular, but again, short form recorded video. So short form is what it's all about here 
potentially with the exception of podcasts, okay? So what does this mean for us? How do we use this information to our advantage? Now, I just wanna reiterate, after you've watched this video, go and watch my other video that I put out about how developers like to learn and solve problems because this is super interesting data as well. Again, you can find the video in the description down there. But what I wanna do is I wanna go and sketch out some solutions that you can put into practice today that I think will really help you to make the most of this information. Now, I'm gonna break this into kind of two sections, okay? We're gonna have things that you should increase, okay? And then things that you should reduce, all right? So uh, these are the two things that we're gonna focus on, right? So what should you increase the, 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 the prevalence of what you're doing and what are the things that you should reduce the focus on? So um, the first thing that I'd recommend you do um, is that you absolutely focus on social media, okay? Now, it's very clear when we take a look at this data, right? I mean, you only have to look at this right here. Social media updates are a very, very common way in which people are staying up to date. Uh, we can also see this in the previous data as well, the second one up there. Social media is what it's all about, okay? So what I'd recommend you do here is you focus on really kind of two things, right? The first one is that you focus on content. Now, content is where you create short form or long form content. Maybe you're creating videos, you're creating blog posts, you're creating how to's. Again, review my other video where I, where I provide some really concrete recommendations on that. I generally recommend that you do in at least uh, one a week, okay? Um, so what you do is you reflect that onto social media. You put that out there. The other thing I would recommend you do as well is you create what I call wisdom nuggets, okay? So wisdom nuggets are um, essentially an individual tweet or LinkedIn post or a TikTok video, whatever it might be. It's just something where you share something in an individual chunk of, of, of utilization. Let me give you an example of what I'm talking about here. Whoa, whoa. let me go to my actual screen so you can see this. So um, um, I'm working with a company right now called Ready Set. They're fairly early on. Um, you can see here they've got a social media account. They've only got 582 followers right now, and this is going to obviously continue to grow. But a good example of a wisdom nugget is this tweet thread that they did, right? So this is spooky season for us. There's nothing more spooky than horrors lurking behind everyday MySQL and Postgres database features. Uh, and then they basically walk through a Twitter thread with a bunch of just like useful recommendations and tips and tricks within Postgres and MySQL, okay? And I love that because what it's doing is it's providing super practical content. And again, you can see even though they've got a relatively small audience, you know, eight retweets, one quote tweet, 11 likes. For a small audience, that's a pretty decently performing tweet, okay? So this is the kind of thing that you're gonna to wanna to focus on when I'm talking about wisdom nuggets, which is really just kind of going through and kind of getting some useful information out there that people can easily start consuming, all right? Now, the other thing that I'm gonna recommend you do as well is you focus on community engagement. Okay, now again, if we go back to the data that we looked at earlier on, on this very first slide that I shared at the beginning of this video, open source communities right at the top, the third one, community websites and forums. Clearly being in a social group setting online is a great place where people stay up to date with what's going on, okay? So there's a couple of things I wanna recommend that you do here as you're thinking about communities. The first one is that if you don't have one, you should build a community, okay? now. Anyone who's seen my videos or read my books or been to my masterclasses will know that this is my area of interest and expertise. I recommend everybody builds a community. It's an amazing way to engage with your audience, to keep them interested, to build relationships, that grows brand and all kinds of other stuff. Subscribe to my uh, YouTube channel. You can find out loads of videos about how to do that, okay? And I primarily recommend that you focus here um, on two things. One is Q&A, and then the other one here is gonna be skills development, okay? Because um, if you provide a community where people can go and solve problems, but then you're also delivering great content into that community where they can learn how to uh, develop their skills, learn how to use your technology, your product, your service, whatever it might be, then they're staying up to date, they're, you're solving them problems, you're offering them tons of value. So focus on getting social media out there, at least one piece of content a week. Or again, check out my previous video for more details on that. Put out those wisdom nuggets and then make sure that you focus on that community in solving problems with Q&A and then skills development. But now you're probably thinking, all right, Jono, well, that all sounds pretty good, but what do you want me to reduce? Like, what shouldn't I be doing? Well, as with many things in life, what I like to do is to look at the data, right? 
And if we go over and look at the data right here from, 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 slash, from um, slash data, what you can see here is that right at the bottom, we've got um, other, right? Which is, I don't know, chicken nuggets are a bad way to stay up to date. Um, other events organized by vendors. So vendor events, not particularly interesting. Hackathons, meetups, official vendor newsletters, things like that. So these are the things I, as a general rule, would recommend you maybe steer clear from. The first one is newsletters, right? Now, I know this is gonna be absolute treason to some of you, but I don't, I think some people like newsletters and I like to get that kind of digest of stuff or that bulletin of stuff through their email. But I think a lot of people um, start reading them and then they get bored of them. The problem with any kind of automated piece of email that comes in is unless it grabs you every single time, it's easier to start ignoring it, right? So I would instead, instead of focusing uh, on newsletters, I would actually go and send out like individual little emails, like with things that are going on inside of your technology or service, whatever you're building, instead of consolidating them together out into a single newsletter. The other thing as well, that's clearly um, getting less traction according to the data is hackathons. And it kind of doesn't surprise me. This is bugging me. I didn't write that well. Hang on, let me fix this for you folks. Um, God, I screwed it up again. Um, you know, going to a hackathon is a big ask for somebody. Usually it takes place over a whole day. You gotta go up, you gotta go to a setting, you've often gotta take a day off work or take a day away from your family or your friends at the weekend. It's kind of a lot to ask. And I don't think people really go to hackathons necessarily to stay up to date. They go there to kind of solve problems, learn new skills. I think people are much more likely to go on in a, in a, in a physical setting. They're much more likely to go and get value at a meetup or some, somewhere else, okay? But the other thing, um, that I would recommend you stay clear of is vendor events, right? Instead of like putting on your own dedicated vendor event, let's say you're building a, um, I don't know, a, um, a testing platform, right? Instead of putting on a bunch of your own events, instead get out to other people's events. Instead, focus on the online. Get out and speak at other people's meetups. Go and uh, go to other people, go and rep, you know, represent your technology at conferences and places like that. I think you're gonna get a lot more bang for your book if you focus on that. Now, I wanna be very clear about something, that these things that I'm talking about that we need to reduce here, these things are not 100% cast in stone. For some of you, a hackathon is gonna make a ton of sense, right? Um, but I'm saying as a general rule, I'd probably focus a little bit less on these these days, certainly focus on this, and I would definitely, definitely focus on this because we see time and time again, consistently that communities add tons of value. So before I wrap up again, go check out the link to my other video where I'm gonna share with you more data, this time focused on how developers like to learn and, stay, and, and, and solve problems because that also is really insight, insightful in how it guides our content strategy, our developer engagement strategy. And given the fact that developers are so in demand, are so difficult to, to, to attract and get to, I think you'll find that data really useful. See you in the next one.